Oh, oh apa ni? Aku kat mana ni? Bambi. T-shirt on. <laughs> um, so, right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is... Hi. <laughs> my name is Sarah Graham. And um, I, I know you're all familiar with my work. Um, so I'm a photorealist and I paint super colorful paintings of toys and sweets. Um, and I'm a, a photorealist in that my, my paintings are based on photographs, but I do, I do try to go like way beyond the initial source photo and create something which is almost like super real. So, you know, everything is enhanced, color, um, light and shade and, you know, highlights are exaggerated, focus and blur to really get that three dimensional effect and hopefully create something really vivid and exciting to look at. Um, and yeah, and I want people to feel like a kid again when they look at my work, you know, that joy that you get when you walk into a sweet shop or, <laughs> um, so yeah. So what I'm gonna start by doing is showing you around my studio. Um, hang on. Right, here we go. <laughs> so look, I've got an empty easel at the moment. <laughs> That's not good. So I'm doing an exhibition next week. So at the moment, I'm just getting everything prepped and ready for that. So I'll show you my latest commission that I finished the other week, which is Alice in Wonderland. I hope you, you can see that okay. Um, so that's like in my photorealist style, which I'm mostly known for. But then I have been doing these other really kind of funky, neon, uh, really fun paintings that are a lot quicker than my photorealism. These are painted especially for the exhibition and they're based on stencils because I really like street art. You know, I love Banksy. And so these were kind of inspired by that. Then I've got some framed prints which you can't see very clearly because of the light, but um, of my photo realist work, they're all going in the exhibition. And then there's a stencil version of Dorothy, because uh, I've painted a lot of Wizard of Oz pieces over the years because I love it. This is kind of like, yeah, there's another Chopper Chop. VW in the corner, can you see that? Yeah. So yeah. So that's, um, so the, yeah, this is my main studio space. That's where I work. Uh, as you can see, it's got big windows. It's really light and airy, high ceilings, which is really good for the easel. And I'll take you into my photography room. So this is where I keep all the stuff I've collected over the years. It's a bit of a mess. My Barbie Wizard of Oz dolls. <laughs> Um, and yeah, and at the moment, I've just finished doing the photography for my next commission, which is of chocolate. And I ended up eating half of it as I was doing the photography because it was melting, so I had to. Um, so yeah, I've got a blackout blind um, so I can control the lighting and, you know, kind of like just, yeah you know it allows me to create the effects that I really want that I really want from my photo and this is my storeroom so there we go so that's that's my studio which I absolutely love I've been here seven and a half years now it's the best studio I've ever had um so yeah I'm very pink today aren't I it's my favorite color <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I'll start with a little bit about me and how I came to be an artist. So I was born in Hitchin in Hertfordshire in 1977, so I'm 44 now. And um, yeah, I've got a younger sister, Elaine, she's two years younger than me. And we grew up on a council estate, uh, didn't have much money at all as kids, you know, had a very sort of on modest 
um, upbringing, didn't go on any holidays, fancy holidays anyway, went on coach trips to castles and the seaside. Um, I didn't go on an aeroplane until I was 18 years old. <laughs> so, um, but the one thing we did have was our art and our dad really like encouraged and nurtured that in us. And so it was always making and painting things like after school and weekends, like just always creating. And dad bought us loads of art materials. And um, I'm gonna show you the first oil painting I ever did when I was eight years old. So, yeah. Can you just see that on the screen? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so this was my first oil painting. I was quite, you know, I'm quite impressed that I managed to get the perspective so well with the fence going off into the distance and this little blackbird. Um, so, yeah, so I have been using oil paints for years, 36 years. Yeah. It's unusual for um, someone of that age to have oil paints, isn't it? I know, I know, because like, obviously you have to use white spirit to clean. And um, my dad was like, just don't tell your mother. <laughs> so yeah, we kept it. Um, yeah, it, it was unusual. My dad was quite unusual though, to be fair. So um, yeah, so yeah, I loved art all through school. It was my strongest subject, but I, w I was also very academic. I was a real spot, to be honest, like, um, and, you know, and I, I, I was very good at, like, uh, I got A's and B's in my GCSEs and, and in my A level, I got an A in R, A in psychology and a B in English literature. So when it came to going to university, I was really torn, um, really torn because like, I had a lot of teachers, most of my teachers telling me to pursue psychology so that I could get a proper job. Um, and everyone said, just keep art as a hobby, you know? Um, and so what I did do, I was so confused, but I, I applied for an art foundation course straight after school um, just to buy myself a bit more time, but it kind of didn't work really because we had to apply for uni at the beginning of the year anyway. So I did apply for a psychology degree. Uh, at Birmingham University and then by the end of the foundation course um, I was kind of panicking that I'd made a huge mistake and this was confirmed when the principal of the college came down to my studio space and said you're making a huge mistake you should be doing art so um, and then my dad he was the only person he was like follow your heart you know he was the only other person saying so so I switched last minute from from the psychology degree to a fine art degree, um, I ended up going through clearing. So it was a bit of a haphazard journey, <clears throat> but I'm so glad I made that decision in the end. So I had a really, had a brilliant time at university, absolutely loved it. It was such good fun. And um, it's where I discovered photorealism. So I loved photography. And obviously I've been oil painting my whole life and I love realism. So, so when I discovered this painting by Gerhard Richter, which is amazing because it just really does look like a photograph, I found it in an art book and it just blew my mind. Uh, Gerhard Richter is a German painter. He's, I think he recently turned 90, but he's like, he's had records for the most expensive artwork ever sold by a living artist. He's awesome. And um, that was how I discovered photorealism. And yeah, there were other peers as well on my degree that were into photorealism and they gave me lots of advice and tips. I'll show you my first attempt. It's, um, it's quite bad. <laughs> uh, so it's this one here. Um, it's from a photograph that my dad took of me when I was a baby. That's my dad's foot. Um, so yeah, so that was, <laughs> that was my very first attempt. And I went on to do a few like other pieces, but um, yeah, at that stage, um, I was exploring different subject matter as well. And I did, in my second year, I did all these beachscapes. 
um, because I'd been work, I did Work America program and um, I worked in a place called Ocean City in America um, and we worked on a boardwalk and looked out at the beach all day and that was what we were staring at all day long. So that's what inspired those, but they're significant. I'll come back to those. Um, and then my final degree show is here. So it was all portraits, because um, I was also really inspired by the work of Chuck Close, amazing photorealist, uh, portrait painter. Um, so yeah, and I started to introduce a bit of colour uh, don't condone smoking. I don't know why I painted that as a subject. That was my sister's boyfriend. Um, I've got some closer. Yeah, so here we go. You can see them a bit more close up. Um, but it was really fun. They were all my fellow students. So it was quite fun getting the likeness and have everyone say, oh my God, that really looks like them. Um, but also on my degree, we had to do a professional practice module so we had to put on an exhibition publicly and um, I um, worked in a pub part-time to earn a bit of money and um, I above the pub were these two empty floors and I asked my landlord if I could turn them into an art gallery as you do and uh, he said yes after talking to the brewery and so we turned it into a functioning art gallery this is this is the space. I mean, it was huge because it was on two floors. Um, and that's where I started selling work. And I sold the beachscapes, a couple of the beachscapes for 150 pounds, which when I was a student was an <laughs> awful lot of money. Um, so yeah, so that was kind of what planted the seed that I could maybe be an artist. So, um, yeah, I graduated in 2000 with a 2-1 and um, I moved to Reading simply because my boyfriend at the time, hang on, sorry. I've got a dry mouth. I, um, my boyfriend got a job in Reading, so I moved there. A friend of mine who also moved to Reading, her boyfriend was a manager of a pub. So we had a go at like using the upstairs of that pub as a studio and we wanted to turn it into a gallery like we had done in Leicester, but there was no electricity, no running water and, um, and her boyfriend quit and we got thrown out. And I was literally, because I lived in a bed sit at the time, I didn't have anywhere to put my work. So outside the pub, there was a skip. <laughs> And I was either going to put my work, it literally put it in a skip, or there was a gallery in the centre of Reading called the Jelly Leg Chicken, which was a bit of a funny name. Put me off at first, actually. It didn't sound like a proper gallery, but it was. It was amazing. And I took a beachscape in there and they were hanging an exhibition. So they put it on the wall straight away and it sold for a thousand pounds. And bear in mind, like I'd been selling them for 150 quid, like a thousand pounds kind of blew my mind. And I had a job at the time, just a shop job. So I quit and um, I, I, we replaced the beach with another beach and then that sold for a thousand pounds. So I thought, right, okay, I'm gonna give this a go. The gallery helped me find my first studio. They gave me a part-time job. Um, so I started applying to galleries, got a lot of rejections actually, um, but it didn't put me off. I was quite persistent um, and determined. So I, I found enough that, you know, would represent me and I did art fairs. There's an art fair called the Affordable Art Fair in London, which I did. And yeah, so 2001, I set myself up as self-employed. So that's 21 years ago. So I've been a practicing artists you know professionally all that time um, and then eventually at the gallery I got promoted to curator which meant that I put on the exhibitions I chose all the submissions from um, artists and so that was an invaluable experience and yeah it was a fantastic time but it all changed quite dramatically in 2004 when my dad passed away 
So I was only 26 at the time. Um, and weirdly, the gallery closed at the same time. So I decided to move back to Hitchin to help support my mum. And um, I moved my studio into my old bedroom that was my teenage bedroom. And uh, I promised my mum I'd only be there a few months. And I was there three years. <laughs> Sorry, mum. Um, but yeah, and then I, I did manage to get a part-time job again in an art gallery in town. And I also met a group of women artists and we formed a little kind of artist collective called SG5 Art, did exhibitions together, just supported each other. So I'm lucky in that respect that I've always had like a network of artists around me because I had that in Reading as well. Um, so anyway, working away still from my little bedroom studio. And then in 2007, my career break really came when I was signed by a leading fine art publisher called Washington Green. And what that meant was they, up until that point, I'd just been selling originals, but they made, they made limited edition prints of my work and they sold them all over the UK um, and they bought all my originals. So it was, um, it was just really exciting, you know, and at that point, my name really um, got out there and I, I was doing lots of press interviews, radio interviews, like the local Look East filmed me because <laughs> um, the kind of strap line. Oh, I haven't shown you my first um, photo real toy painting, have I? Sorry. So when I, yeah, when I was in Reading, I was exploring all different subject matter and this was my first, <laughs> it's of a little dead fish. <laughs> but that was my first go at, um, yeah, I got into macro photography and I was taking close up object paintings of things close up like um, Blossom and, to and so yeah, that's how the toys came along. Cause my studio was next door to a model shop and they had loads of all these toys. So I was just exploring those. And, and then I, I mean, I went on to paint um, other toys such as Pokemon, as you can see there, a shark. <laughs> um, I actually became known as the fish girl at this point. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's um, where was I? I've lost more, I've lost track now. So yeah, so I got published and um, doing all these interviews, signing autographs, which felt like ridiculous. But um, and yeah, and I was very prolific for those next seven years, and I did some of my best known work, including this. This is a CD. <laughs> Do they even exist anymore? So, yeah, so this was an album cover for a band called the Kaiser Chiefs. Hands up if you've heard of the Kaiser Chiefs. Hey, that is the, that is the biggest response I've had. So that's really cool. You know your music. So, um, yeah, the lead singer, Ricky Wilson, approached me in 2008 after seeing my work in a gallery in Leeds. And then um, it didn't happen at that point because he wanted me to do their third album cover. And then we became friends. I went to loads of gigs and which was really cool. And then um, in 2012, he just texted me and said, how long would it take to paint the end of a stick of rock? And so that was how that came about. And that was a real dream come true because at university, I, I really liked Julian Opie's album cover of Blur. And so I kind of dreamed about doing an album cover one day. So that was very cool. Um, and also, yeah, and then Ricky Wilson and I, our paths have crossed again more recently because um, I don't know if any of you saw it, but I was a guest judge on Britain's Best Young Artist on CBBC. Did any I of you see, see that? Susan saw it, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Oh, cool. So, yeah, so that was really cool. And that was another dream come true, because when I was a kid, there was an art programme with a presenter, an artist called Tony Hart, who was like my hero. And he was on the BBC and I thought, oh, my goodness, I'd love to be on TV one day. So that was pretty cool. Um, 
And then, so I was with the publishers until 2014, but I left them to become independent again, just because the nature of publishing had changed quite a bit and there was less opportunity for me to paint what I wanted to. And so I'd been with them seven years. It felt like the right time to move on. And then in 2015, I moved into this studio space. Oh yeah, and, and I did, uh, I did leave my mum's bedroom and I did get a studio <laughs> um, in a village just outside Hitchin and then I moved to another studio in Hitchin and then in 2015 I moved here. Um, and then the other thing that happened in 2015 was I was on the GCSE exam paper. So that was amazing. And uh, it broke my website actually <laughs> when the paper was released because so many people, students logged on. Um, and yeah, and I'm studied in schools now all over the country and all over the world. So, um, which is amazing. Um, so yeah, I'll talk a bit about my process now. Obviously it's a bit of a shame. I haven't got anything at the moment on the easel, but um, hopefully, have you seen my time-lapse films of me creating a painting? Yeah. So I, hopefully you've seen that I, um, Everywhere, everything starts with a photograph in my photography studio. I don't really manipulate it very much on Photoshop because I'm not very good at it. So I, I just kind of uh, crop it to the size of the canvas and then I scale it up by eye. I, I mark the edges of the canvas and the edges of the photos, they correspond to give me a rough idea. If a painting is really complicated and there's lots of text, I will grid. Um, which is quite a good method for scaling things up. Um, transcribing, is that the right word? Um, so yeah, so I start out with sketching the whole image in yellow acrylic. So um, the reason I do this is because it's really easy to fix if you make mistakes. And once I've got the sketch down, I then do a full color acrylic underpainting and um, yeah, and then I do the oil painting, which is all you see, you know, when it's actually finished. The, the, the acrylic just acts like a kind of map and it means that I can reference the photograph less. And I'm not short of ideas anymore. Like I've, I'm genuinely worried I won't live long enough to paint everything I want to paint. <laughs> like I've got so many ideas, um, but I didn't, I struggled in the early days with that, you know, when I was kind of finding my way, but as I've kind of grown and understood myself as an artist more and more, um, yeah, ideas come thick and fast. And, and they often come through a commission because obviously <clears throat> like that's one way I make a living is painting things that other people want, but luckily people usually want what I'm known for so like Alice in Wonderland was a dream like to paint that because I want I did do an Alice in 2010 but I've wanted to do another one for years so when that commission came along I was like yes happy days um so yeah I've shown you my photography studio and, and I can spend ages sometimes I spend a week doing the photography I've got a painting to show you actually um this one, no, I've seen that one. Hang on, can you see the Lego? Yeah. 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 So, so that commission was painted last year and the photography for that actually took a week because I, it was so tricky to get them all in the right position and the client kept saying, oh, can that one move, move back a bit and that one come forward a bit? And it was a real case of trial and error and then, um, yeah, but I was really, really pleased with that one. Like, it was so much fun to paint. It's the first time I'd ever painted um, Lego. So, um, yeah, and, and as you can see, like, so the blurry sections where it's kind of like lens flare, um, they're actually the hardest part to paint. Um, and the areas in focus are actually much more straightforward. And to paint the blurry sections, I actually use really big brushes, so I use these, oh. um, 
paint and I put the paint on quite thick and I just blend and blend and blend. So people often think my work's airbrushed, but it isn't, it's all done with brushes. There's all my brushes, you can see. Just that all around. Yeah, so I've got a lot of brushes. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's how I create my work. And um, once they're finished, they take quite a long time to dry. So, and, and there's loads of other stuff going on. You know, I um, obviously I work a lot with schools. Um, I sell my own limited edition prints now. So I'm always like pootling off to the post office uh, with, from my online shop. My boyfriend works with me now. So he's upstairs in a workshop and he does all my framing and he's going to manage like more of the merchandise side of things because at the moment all I've got is cushions but we want to have lots of things available um because I can't afford my artwork but I could afford a tea towel so um so yeah so we're going to expand all of that I'm hopefully going to put a book out this year which I'm really hoping happens I've just been so busy with other things um but yeah, the other thing I wanted to just tell you about is that um, it's not been straightforward for me because on a personal level, I've had quite a lot of struggles. So I've got bipolar disorder um, and my dad had bipolar. So I grew up with it, which was really tough at times. And um, I've been in hospital quite a few times over the years. It started in 2005. Um, mostly with episodes of depression, which was always really tough because I, I can't paint when I'm in a depression. So I would fall behind with my work. Um, and yeah, I mean, once I'd come out of an episode, I'd get back to it. And my art is something which really has always pulled me through. Um, but yeah, so I, I was mostly suffering with episodes of depression right up until 2017. So there are two types of bipolar. There's type one where you have severe mania and mania is like the opposite of depression. So you're euphoric, you have loads of energy, you don't really sleep very much, you, you have grandiose ideas and delusions and then moderate depressions, that's type one. Type two is moderate mania with really severe depressions. And that was my diagnosis for a long time until 2017 when I had my first full blown mania. And um, that was really devastating. I had a massive impact on my life. Um, my husband left me, I had to sell my home. I had to really rebuild my life. Uh, I didn't paint for, the best part of two years because after I had the mania which lasted three months and then I went into hospital for a month because I actually got sectioned um, and then I had depression for a whole year following that so I didn't paint for a really long time and when I did get back to it I had to almost relearn my technique and how I paint like it was it was really weird. It, it was like, I, I, and I'd lost all my confidence. And um, so, yeah, so I had to sort of bit by bit relearn and um, yeah, but, but my art completely turned my life around. It gave me a purpose and a focus and a lot of joy. You know, my art does give me a lot of joy and um, it really helped me heal and and like I say, rebuild my life. And I haven't had an episode now in three years. I'm officially in remission um, and I do a lot of things to keep myself well. So I practice self care. I practice mindfulness, which is about just being present. I, I take medication, I don't drink. I do lots of exercise. So I really look after myself and I just, you know, I'm living proof that you can recover. And like I say, I'm in remission now. So it's just a really important message that I want to give that, you know, 
you can recover. It doesn't have to define you. It's not, if you ever get a diagnosis of a men mental health disorder, you can overcome it. You can lead a really happy, full and um, successful life. So, um, yeah, and I'm now uh, a patron. I've, you know, I've become a mental health advocate. I talk about it a lot on social media. I've given talks. I gave one recently to the British Library because I really want to break down the stigma and normalize mental health disorders. Um, so they're not scary and people are less afraid of getting a help, reaching out and getting help. I'm actually a patron of a mental health charity now called Poets In, who are a creative charity who do lots of work with poetry and creative writing and visual arts. And so, yeah, I just, you know, it's not been an easy journey for me, but it's been a brilliant one ultimately. And yeah, that's, that's me and that's my story. So hopefully, hopefully it inspires you. And I don't know if you've got questions. I, I do want to see your artwork actually. I'd love to do you see what you can do it. Hold it up for starters. Oh, see the robot. Lots of sweets. Oh, wow. Um, oh, they're fantastic. And they're all on canvas as well. That's brilliant. We didn't, um, they've done them in acrylic. Yeah. And the yellow, what we, yeah, gather in. You can gather in. I think you might be able to see it. <laughs> I'm going to take a photo at the same time. Okay. Um, <laughs> they're brilliant, guys. They are so good. Wow. <laughs> Just here to say, by the way. Oh, you're all really, you're, so, you're all super talented. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, so what we did though, in order, because our project was about the colour mixing as much yeah. as anything. So we, they chose an image, but yeah. they used carbon paper, carbon copy paper to transfer that onto. Oh, that's a good idea. The drawing itself was accurate because that wasn't right. what we wanted looking at and then these are they were only allowed the primary colors oh okay and yeah black and white to create those so those all being mixed that is they... brilliant color mixing is an art in itself that yeah. i'm i'm really impressed seriously yeah they've done really really well so yeah this is... Year eight. And I'm just wondering if we can, they have got some questions, but if very quick, while well, Sarah's there, can we sort of turn around to your, got Sarah in the background and then you're facing me for a photo, does that make sense? So if you quick turn around to your, we've got Sarah, so you're going over there. Uh, you can your chairs. Doesn't matter, there we go. Come on. <laughs> Seriously, look at the breadth of. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. Really lovely. So and it's so that. lovely to see them all on canvas as well. Oh wow! Yeah, mm -hmm. that. I mean, that's tricky. All those stripy lollies in there. That's not easy. Not anymore, um, but those are just a few that have been done. Yeah. But um, so, guys, have you got? Is there anyone got questions, or are you gone? With... Yes, Dudley. How long did it take to paint your, your paintings? So on, on average, it's a month. So the, oh, I'll show you another one I did recently. When, when you say a month, in, is that sort of eight hours in the studio a day? I mean, because obviously a month for us is one art lesson a week. 
<laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it, oh no, that's not it. Hang on. Yeah, can you see the chopper chops? Yeah. 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 yeah, so this painting took five weeks. Um, so, I mean, my, my painting day usually starts with a cup of tea, <laughs> very important. And then I usually procrastinate for a bit. And then I just look at the painting and I get started. I do maybe a couple of hours, have a lunch break, often go for a little walk just to clear my head. And then I do a few hours in the afternoon. So it's not like I used to do really long days. Sometimes I used to do like 11 hour days, but not anymore. You know, I, I manage my time a bit better. Um, like I said, there's always other stuff going on, like emails and admin to do. So, um, so my days are quite varied, um, but yeah, a painting day, maximum six hours at the easel so <laughs> but that's you know that's enough I'm, I'm very I'm prolific you know and um yeah well no I'm relatively prolific I mean a lot of artists work a lot quicker than that um the longest I've ever spent on a painting was about three months that was a really big one of america of american sweets it was called american sweet dreams but i loved this one that i'm showing you now sweet all stars i've called it because it was the first time i've painted wine gums and Har uh, star mix and um yeah it was a real joy to paint so um so yeah Sometimes I can do a painting in a couple of days, like these neon ones at the back behind me, they literally took a few days, but they're not as complex as my photorealism. Okay. Um, Enrique. Yeah, uh, if you wouldn't have been a painter like, or an artist, what would, you, what would have been your like the dream job? Oh. Well, what <laughs> you know, my dream job was, and it's the reason I'm wearing this t-shirt today, so my dream job was to be an animator for Disney. So still art, still in art, but um, yeah, that was when I was a kid, that was what I wanted to do. But obviously now, you know, with computers, I'm not good on computers. So I think I would have struggled with animation if I had gone into it. <laughs> I think I found my own way of creating Disney-like images, you know, um, but, and also, if I hadn't done anything artistic, I think I would have gone into psychology because obviously that's what I almost studied at university. Thomas? When you started painting again for the first time in two years, how did you overcome the struggles of bipolar? So I did some, they were quite small paintings. They were quite simple. They were of chopper chops but they were just of a single lolly on a plain background. And um, yeah, I mean, I went in straight away with painting. Like I, I didn't, you know, I didn't kind of start drawing or anything like that. Um, but like I say, they were much simpler um, photographs I was working from and um, yeah, one one of them, oh, it's wrapped up in the corner. I also did a couple of unicorns. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it's wrapped up in the corner. I'll show you. To me, this is simple compared to a lot of my other work. Um, can you see that little orange unicorn? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that was one of the ones I did when I was just getting back into it. Okay, we haven't got much longer. Charlie? Uh, what has the most expensive painting sold for? Yeah, I knew you were going to ask me that. Uh, so the most expensive is £24,000. And it was a big diptych. So it was across two canvases. It was about two and a half metres wide. And it's called Sweet Escape. It's, it's on my website. But yeah, that was pretty yeah. cool. Most of my paintings sell for around 10, 12,000 pounds. You know, there's potential with these canvases you've got here, guys. Sam. Yeah. Sorry for making this difficult, but how do you, uh, uh, does 
the freezy image when you when you're doing your pigeons does it just come naturally to you or do you have to do some sort of like circle curve sort of way to you know, get that sort of 3d do you know what i it does come naturally it's like i said i've always done realism right since i was a child so you know i'm good at copying like that's the bottom line i am good at having an image in front of me and recreating it um i think I've, i'm very observant um because it is about really studying what's going on and um yeah looking really carefully so i think that's something i do naturally and you know i do think there is something that's in me that drives me and it's hard to sort of explain what that is exactly but um yeah it's it's just there it just flows like once i'm once i'm into my painting it it really does just flow and Sometimes I'm not even thinking about it, it's just happening. So, yeah. I think if there's any more questions, would you be happy for me to email you with any other questions that- Yeah, is the, is the lesson about to end? Yeah, but yes, it's their break time. So I think uh, oh, okay. Yeah, do email me any other questions. I'm happy to I'm answer not, them. Not. How do you blend your background with the, from, with the image you're drawing? It's the, so, how do the Blending. Yeah, yeah, the blending, as I showed you, the big brush that I showed you is how I do it. So I put the paint on fairly loosely, just, um, and then I just sweep, sweep the paint until it's all nicely, nicely blended. And that's a technique I taught myself with lots and lots of practice. Yeah, practice, that's the key. Yeah. <laughs> a big big thank you to you I, I i think they were certainly very excited to hear that you would be able to speak to them today and oh. um, i'm glad you like the canvases they've worked yeah you've been do you know what you've been a really lovely group to talk to you you know very kind of i can tell you were really into it and i hope you got a lot from it and um yeah it's lovely to see you all and and how many of you do think you want to go on to be artists or work in a creative job? Any well, of you? One or two. One. And, one yeah. Or just, yeah. Or just go for it. Do sporty ones here, so I think they prefer to do some sports, but there are. Oh, some. okay. That's pretty cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, what do you say? Thank you. Oh, thank you guys. Take care.